Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get this project all finished up. So, um, welcome to part six. Is it part six already? Part five? Part six? I don't know. The very last part of our um, petite vanity project. And basically, we're all finished with the um, vanity itself, the drawers. We just have to finish out the inside of this little cavity here. Um, we're going to reupholster the seat and then we got to spray the mirror with the brilliant gold that we're going to use um, on the mirror that's going with this bad boy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, whoop, let's go this way, um, some Mod Podge for fabric. <clears throat> so Mod Podge for fabric and I've got, um, let's see, a brush. I'm going to apply that with a brush. Um, I also have some spray adhesive for um, reinforcing. So I use, when I'm decoupaging fabric, which is what I'm gonna be doing on the inside here, I like to use a Mod Podge and as it dries pretty quickly, then I also like to spray the back of my um, either paper or fabric or whatever I'm using with um, the spray adhesive. So I've cut my fabric to size to fit right in there. So we're just gonna make sure it fits real quick. And it does, we might have to trim, let's see. We may have to trim just a little bit here um, with some super sharp, super sharp scissors, but um, it fits. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush and I'm gonna put Mod Podge all over the inside. This is gonna be a little tricky because it's such a small cavity, um, but we can do it. I like to decoupage fabric as opposed to paper. The reason is um, you don't get the bubbles and the wrinkles um, as much as with paper, and I think it just looks nicer, but that's my own personal preference. So um, I use the same method with paper, except that with paper, I use an iron to um, iron out any bubbles and wrinkles. So Mod Podge dries clear, so if we get it on the backboard there or somewhere that we don't really want it, it's all right, it's gonna dry clear. So no big deal. And I'm just kind of loading it up. I'm loading up my brush and I am painting on my Mod Podge. Not very um, cleanly or carefully either. I should be a little more careful. It's kind of hard getting in this little cavity here. So we're just gonna do the best we can to cover our entire space with the Mod Podge. Generally, it's not this difficult, but I usually have more room for my arm, so um, we're just gonna go with it. And I wanna make sure I get my edges um, so that the fabric doesn't start to come up, okay? So there we go, we got our inside cavity filled. I'm just gonna kinda wipe up what's here, even though it'll dry clear, so no big deal. Um, no big deal, but I don't want the little drips there, so I'm gonna wipe that up. Okay, and I'm gonna take my fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> take my fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the back of my fabric with my spray adhesive. And then I'm just gonna carefully, very carefully, oh, I got it, it got started to stick to itself. Very carefully. Push it back in there to fit right in my little spot here, my little cavity. It's gonna be tricky not to get it to stick to itself or stick to the wrong place, um, but we'll do it. Okay, see? So once I got that in place, I'm gonna make sure it's all spread out, no wrinkles or bubbles. Um, got it a little off center here, so I'm just centering it up. And these are stripes, so it's very important that I don't have anything pulling. If it starts to pull on stripes, they'll look wonky, so we definitely don't want wonky stripes. So we're just going to make sure it's nice and flat and not stretched, okay? So I'm going to go over with my hands, smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles. It will dry clear, so don't worry too much about, um, you know, 
that starts to kind of sneak through, it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my shears, which are super sharp, and I'm just gonna go along the edge and cut to fit this little curve here. I have a product called, uh, shoot, what's it called? Fray, it's some sort of fray stopper that I can put on the ends if this is fraying really bad. It's not doing too terrible. Um, but I have some stuff, it's a little liquid bottle and a little, little, it's liquid in a little bottle that you can um, put on the ends of your fabric to stop fraying and you can get it at the fabric store, craft store. And um, I don't think this is fraying too bad though. It's pretty typical cotton um, quilting type material. So it is not going to fray too bad. Okay, so that's our inside, okay? Make sure I got all my wrinkles smoothed out still. All right, so that's the inside. That's how we line our um, <clears throat> inside of our vanity. So um, next I'm gonna do some um, Big Mama's Butter on the little QB drawers. Big Mama's Butter is a salve for like wood or furniture and it's, um, it's made by Dixie Bell and it comes in unscented, it comes in Orange Grove and it comes in Suzanne's Garden, which smells like um, roses. I like the orange scent myself, but I'm just going to take an old wax brush. Um, I bought this brush a long time ago. I cleaned it, so it's not a, I'm not using a dirty brush. I just am dedicating this for Big Mama's butt. So I'm just going to go around the outside of my drawers that we finished. Um, our little QB drawers. I'm going to go around the outside with the Big Mama's butter. And then that way, um, that way they'll glide a little bit smoother since they were, were just like some, they were just raw wood from the craft store. Um, they didn't glide super smooth and I'm going to do what I can to make sure that they glide smooth. So I'm going to get the inside inch or two of my um, cavities here and stick my draws in. Here we go. And you don't need too much of the, the Big Mama's butter. You can use it sparingly. I had a little bit much on that one, so I'm not gonna reload my brush. I'm just gonna use what um, I had on my brush. And it cures in about 30 days um, or so, like fully cures in about 30 days or so, but um, it's not gonna hurt my paint or my sealer. It's all natural and safe and it smells so good. So, um, Again, just the inside cavity, a couple inches inside so that my drawers glide smoother. And I think the only thing I have left to do on my drawers is cut off the little thing there, but I have got to get my, um, I've got some wire cutters that I use to cut off the excess of the posts. And those are at my shop, not here at my home. So. I don't have those on me now, but that's what I use. I just use some wire cutters, um, which I have to replace often because it will dull your um, wire cutters, but it's all good. So I'm just basically kind of rubbing the Big Mama's butter into the sides of my drawers. And then the inside two inches of the cavity here just to kind of lube them up a little bit, you know? Lube up the drawers so they slide a little better. See how they're sliding? And one more left to go. And then we're going to upholster our seat, okay? So this is the last one. My last little draw here. pretty and now we've got this fun little contrasting um, uh, da, 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 fabric here inside it's super fun so um, I'm digging how this is turning out um, we are oh you know what we've got to add our moldings too so we're gonna go ahead and uh, 
we'll upholster our seat while our heat gun heats up and then we're gonna add our moldings because we aren't done. I almost forgot those and that's the most exciting part about this project is some moldings. So um, I'll be back with the moldings, heat gun and um, our chair for reupholstering. Okay, I've got my cutesy little um, stool here for my vanity. Take a look at this little guy. It's a little bow and it's all gold, except it's got this funky uh, micro suede type um, deal on it. And I'm gonna reupholster that with some matching stripes that we used um, on the inside of our vanity because why not matching fabric, you know? So um, I think it'll be super cute. So we're gonna go ahead and take the seat off and to do that, we're just gonna unscrew some screws on the bottom, Whoa, gently. So there's one, two, three screws, which is pretty typical. Um, just gonna unscrew those and not lose our screws here. Right there on the cardboard. Um, I'm going to set the base aside and I want to um, I want a piece of fabric that is about the same size plus a couple inches to wrap under. So I'm going to cover my stool seat and see how big I need for my fabric to be. I, I suggest doing this on a flat surface. I didn't I didn't think to grab one before I hit begin on recording. Um, I suggest doing this on a flat surface, um, but uh, we're just gonna do do with what we got here. So um, you want to measure it about the size of your seat. Got a little Mod Podge wrapper on there, plus a couple of inches. So I'm just adding a couple of inches on each side, and I'm gonna cut because you don't want too much fabric. You don't want too much fabric hanging off and hanging down from um, underneath your seat. So um, just a couple inches or however much you need in order to get it to wrap around the seat would be good. So I'm gonna start in one spot and I'm gonna pull it tight. I've got, <clears throat> I've got a battery operated stapler here, but you can use a hand, a manual one. That'll be fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna spin it to the opposite side and I'm gonna staple my opposite side. So once I've got my opposite side, then I just wanna continue around and I wanna avoid bunching up on the side. So you have to be very careful, pull it tight and avoid the bunching up on the sides because that's not very pretty. It's not very sightly, you want a nice smooth turn around your um, your edge here. So if you pull it tight, just kind of um, overlap the extra a little bit. It really helps to get a nice um, clean finish. Okay, so we're just gonna go all the way around, just like that, making sure that we don't get bunching up on our edges, because that's meh. Nobody wants bunching up on their edges.
got this last little bit left and it's very important that you pay attention to not um, getting your edges, your, your um, corners all bunched up or where they come around the edge of the seat. Make sure they're not getting all bunched up right at the very end because that's when it can kind of tend to bunch up on you. So just be um, aware of that. And we're almost done with our seat. <coughs> Okay, cool. So, oh, I'm do one more here. Okay, All right, and then I've got a little bit of extra here that I want to cut off because otherwise it'll hang down. I'm gonna cut off this little extra bits here so it doesn't hang down. Hang down under my seat. There's no real precision here. Just want to make it look like a nice clean cut. Okay, and then shake off the excess little fibers. Okay, and see how where we're coming around our corners, we've got a nice clean corner. No, it's not bunching, um, no wrinkles, none of that. It's just nice and clean. Okay, yay. We didn't stretch out our stripes too much, so they're pretty intact. And we're just gonna put it on so that our stripes are going <clears throat> in one direction, or you know, and you don't wanna put it on so that they're like diagonal. I mean, I guess maybe you, maybe you want to, or sideways, but I like them going vertically. I like my stripes vertically. So <clears throat> how does that look? Isn't that pretty? Pretty, right? Oh, I love some gold and some stripes. I mean, you, you can't really beat gold and stripes together, right? So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and um, screw my <clears throat> screws right back in. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this in place. I'm gonna grab my screws, <clears throat> excuse me, try to hold it in place at the same time, that'll be fun. So once I get one in, it should be okay. Make sure I'm straight. Straight, okay. I think it's, I think it's straight. We'll find out here in a second. Okay, put my second screw in. Make sure it's on straight before I put my third screw in. And yes, stayed nice and straight. So, um, all right, I'm gonna put my third screw. Then we'll be all done with our stool. We're getting so close, you guys. Um, third screw goes right here, and then we can move on to our molding. So now we can move on to our moldings. Look how pretty our little stool is with our vanity. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, it matches so nice. We got the bling from the um, hardware on the drawers. And then the hot pink, which matches the inside of the drawers, which are sliding beautifully now. And then, um, of course, our stripes on the inside of the little desk cavity there. And then um, the stripes on our beautiful uh, bow tie seat. So now I think all we have to do is add our moldings, spray our mirror, and um, I think that we'll be good. I don't know, I don't think that we'll be add, adding any gilding wax or anything like that because the details are just so, um, <clears throat> you know, they'll be great with the, with the gold moldings that we already sprayed gold, so. I'm going to get rid of this cardboard underneath. So we'll be all ready to take photos once we spray our mirror. Ooh, let's see. <clears throat> okay. So, moldings. Now, I'm going to paint you up here a little bit. I've got my hot glue gun. Um, as you know, we poured, if you watched the first two parts, you know that we poured our uh, moldings with the resin. 
and um, those set really nicely and really quick and they look beautiful. So we're gonna start right here with our first molding on the back, um, back wall that we added. And we are going to go with this little guy here in the middle and we've got a, uh, a couple little um, uh, swirly jobbies that we're gonna put next to it for um, interest. So I'm just putting some glue gun or some hot glue on the back of my uh, resin mold. I like to use Gorilla Glue for ad attaching molds, um, Gorilla Hot Glue. Um, I'm a big fan of the Gorilla line of products, so I like to use their hot glue. I am confident in it sticking. Um, okay, so we're just gonna center that, hold it right in place for a second. You don't want to put so much glue that it squeezes out the sides. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, here are little swirly jobbies for the sides. So I think, let's see, we're either going to put those up or down. I think let's put them down like this. I'm thinking like that looks good. Oh, that guy's not going to fit. How about we turn them up a little bit like that? What do you think? Like that? Yep. There we go. You can see a little bit better. Um, we're just going to go ahead and put our hot glue on the back of our molding here. And place it just like so. Clamp it a little bit with my fingers to make sure it's going to stick. Do the same with this one. So that is our moldings on the back. Now we've got a couple of pieces of trim that are going to go down the front. Um, let's see, we're going to put those, we're going to put these right here. We've got these pretty little, um, they're called regal trimmings is the name of this mold. And we're going to put those right here on the feet or on the legs. I'm sorry, legs, feet, whatever. I'm going to get some glue happening all the way down my mold. Got to kind of work quickly with the hot glue so it doesn't set up on you before you get to stick your piece. So we're just going to try to center it up as best we can. Clamp it with our hand until it's on there nice and secure. Then we'll move on to this one. And we've only got two more molds after that, one for each side. And I think that's plenty of bling for this piece. I think it'll be just enough blinged out to make me happy. So I don't think I'm gonna add any additional gilding wax like I normally do. I don't know, it might look good around these little rings here, some gilding wax, I don't know. I'll have to look at it to look at it when we're done and see. Okay, so for our sides, we've got these really pretty guys here. I love these. This is one of my favorite molds. It's called Thornton Medallion. Redesign with the and we're gonna put those right there on top of our metallic stripes. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that so pretty? Okay. So hot glue the back of that bad boy. The bigger the mold, the harder it is to work quickly getting um, the hot glue on there, but you've got to do the best you can. We're going to try to center that up on the stripes. See how it's centered right on the stripes? Make sure it's pretty level. Clamp it down with my hand to make sure it's going to stick. And there we go, isn't that beautiful? Look how pretty it is, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, we've got one more side to go and then um, our vanity um, vanity is all done. We just have to do the mirror. Make sure you pick off your glue strings too because those can be pretty unsightly. Okay, one more side to go going to start here and work our way out on the molding, adding our hot glue. 
working quickly. And then I'm gonna make sure that I get it right centered on that stripe is where I want it. And that it's not uh, unlevel, and we want it to be level and center. Get rid of those glue strings. Okay, so clamp it, clamp it with my hand. Make sure that it's all on there and sticking well. Okay, and that's that one. So look how much our molds added to our vanity. Did that not add so much to our vanity? Like it just added a lot of detail, a lot of really much needed detail in my opinion. And we've got that one on that side too. So, um, and then our little guys down there. I'm thinking, you know, what about um, just a little bit of gilding wax on uh, the little rings right here? What do you think? We've got some Eternal, which is gold gilding wax uh, right here. And I think I will add a little bit onto the little rings. I'm just gonna use my finger and just kind of um, go right around the rings here. This is Decor Wax from Redesign with Prima. It's a gilding wax. It's oil-based, but it does dry very quickly to the touch. That's I love it and it's super brilliant and it matches um, a lot of the gold that I use. You can use a small brush if you don't want to use your finger, it's okay. Just needed a little touch of bling to carry down Carry down the leg, didn't we? Okay, so we got that leg. We'll do this leg real quick. And gently. going around it with our finger. And then the last one. And you don't need to seal the decor wax. It's usually the last step. I mean, you can if you want to after about 48 hours, but you don't need to seal the decor wax. It's a, the last step. So that is our vanity and um, the stool. So now we're gonna tape off our mirror and spray that with um, a spray that matches our moldings. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that all ready. I'm gonna tape it off. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of paper on the big part of the mirror and then tape all around the edges, tape the paper in. Um, to avoid getting overspray on the actual mirror itself. Okay, so I got my trusty Design Master 24 karat pure gold spray, the only spray I use for my gold. Got my mirror all taped off with paper on it to avoid getting overspray on the mirror. And then I'm just gonna spray away. Um, I find that most of the time with this spray, okay, 99% of the time with this spray, one coat is enough. Now, if I miss a spot or whatever, that's a little different story, but um, one coat is enough of this spray. One of the reasons why I love it so much, and it gives it a nice, really rich, gold-plated look. So make sure you get all the little details and inside and outside your mirror. Okay, and that, to my Hi, friends, boy. is it. We're gonna let that dry, and then um, we're going to um, wrap up this petite vanity project by yeah. taking the photos of it and get it all nice and posted so everybody can see the final um, steps to this project. Um, thanks for following along, bye.